Old guys will always tell you, well, they don't build cars like they used to, and well, they're right. It's probably a good thing nobody builds cars this big and heavy and dangerous and gas guzzling. But part of me is sad about that. I wish I could have lived in an era when this was luxury and nobody cared about having rock hard suspension or being able to do lap times at the Nürburgring. It was just about riding down the road nice and easy. Buckle your seatbelts because we are going back in time. <laughs> Less flashy than Cadillac and more prestigious than Lincoln, Packard was an American company that stubbornly built luxury automobiles. But being stubborn is dangerous in the car business, and this 1955 Packard Patrician marks the company's effort to catch up with a rapidly changing market that left them behind. Packard had neglected new trends like automatic transmissions, V8 engines, and jet age styling. But when you're stubborn, you don't just buy automatic transmissions from someone else, like other small car companies did. Packard designed and built theirs from the ground up. It took longer and certainly cost more, but only Packard's had Ultramatic Drive, and by 1955, it was standard equipment on all but the cheapest models. That year, they also replaced an aging eight-cylinder inline engine with a brand new V8, and it was a beast. Advertising claimed it had the most horsepower of any production car. Along with it came new modern styling, the work of a one-eyed designer named Richard Teague. With grace and class, Packard joined the tailfin craze, housing what Teague called cathedral taillights in the rear. It was beautiful, but if Packard's religious followers had known that 15 years later Teague would create the AMC Gremlin, they might have excommunicated him. On the inside, you'll find a vast expanse of chrome and steel, no plastic wood trim or fake carbon fiber accents. The Patrician has over 10 different knobs to control luxury features like air conditioning, power antenna, and signal-seeking radio, all advanced technology for the time. The seats feel more like a waterbed, and there's plenty of room to stretch out. It's quite comfortable, even though the position is very upright, just like the family values of the 1950s. In the rear, the Patrician even has carpeted footrests for passengers, and the high roof lets in lots of sun, giving it a very airy feeling. On the road, it feels like you're on a magic carpet ride back in time, before the BMW 3 Series set a precedent that luxury cars needed race-tuned suspension and cross-drilled carbon ceramic brakes. The Patrician lived in a different world. If you make a turn above 15 miles per hour, the tires squeal and the whole car pitches like a boat in a storm. At over two and a quarter tons, the Patrician isn't exactly a sports sedan. When you accelerate in this Packard, it doesn't so much feel like a car as a locomotive pulling away from the station. And it sounds like one too. It even has the horn to go with it. The 5.7 liter provides spectacular power, but it seems to get lost somewhere in the transmission. With only two speeds, it just can't take advantage of all that power. The shifter takes a little finesse as the linkages are probably worn out and it's not like Packard replacement parts are easy to find. Also, the new V8 engines were so powerful that they sometimes broke the transmissions, which makes it all the more impressive that this car's powertrain is original. Somebody restored it a long time ago and it's held up pretty well. A friend described these cars as really good to look at, but not real great to drive. I think my dad's 1993 Chevy farm truck has better performance and handling. And for someone who didn't grow up in the era, it's still a bit of a shock that old cars were so crude. But what the car lacks in mechanics, it makes up for in style. Graceful lines, two-tone paint, and enough chrome to envelop a smart car. And there's just something about the Packard name. It denotes history and heritage. It makes you think of hardworking American craftsmen, not some brand name developed in an air-conditioned office by a focus group. It seems like every few years a car company hires some marketing guru to come up with a new, catchier slogan to replace the old, less catchier one. But you know, Packard used the same six words for over half a century. 
In the early days of the company, the Packard brothers were so busy building cars that no sales brochures had been developed yet. When a potential customer contacted him requesting information, James Ward Packard simply replied, Ask the man who owns one. And for over 50 years, these six little words were Packard's assertion that the greatness of their cars could only be understood by someone who had experienced them firsthand. To Packard, the customer was the ultimate judge of their work. But by 1955, there weren't many customers left. The year before, management approved a hasty merger with Studebaker Corporation, which probably did more harm than good. The new models like this patrician did cause a sales increase, but it wasn't enough to fix the newly formed company's finances. And by 1956, the designs were canned and Packard's factory closed. To add insult to injury, the Packard name stuck around for two more years on poorly disguised Studebaker cars until the company dropped it altogether. It was a tragic end to such a prestigious legacy. Packard's demise leaves a lot of questions. What would a modern-day Packard look like? Could their cars survive in a world obsessed with 0-60 to 60 times and high-speed cornering? Would they trade bench seats and leaf springs for racing buckets and magnetic shocks? And if they did, would it still be a Packard? Perhaps it was better that Packard's demise came from a stubborn refusal to abandon their ideals rather than failing at imitating somebody else's. We'd like to thank Cox Automotive for letting us drive this cool car. These guys can fix just about anything, and they're committed to helping you make smart decisions about your automobile. From regular maintenance to special projects and restorations, Cox Automotive does it all. For more info, visit coxautomotive.biz. And if you've got a cool car you'd like us to make a video of, shoot us an email at thecarmeet at gmail.com.